I was only four years old. We arrived here at the 17th of May, 1951. We arrived in Amsterdam. It was cold outside. And what I remember is uh, a stove to keep the barrack warm. And th that stove, that is always in my mind. I don't forget the stove. And the room was uh, two meter by five and a half meter. There we have to stay in that room, one room. My, uh, my parents and my little brothers. The bed was, as uh, we called it, a stapel bed, two beds on each other. And I can remember the uh, furniture, only a table and four chairs. When my grandfather came here, they were soldiers for the canoe. And the moment they set foot in Holland, they, they got fired. They're not soldiers anymore. They were put into old camps, uh, old uh, concentration camps. He could sometimes he could smell the, the ovens where the bodies were burned and things like that. Um, because spill the things, uh, you heard screaming at night, crying, things like that, people walking. Uh. So for them it was a uh, strange country, cold country. And they had to fit in here. They come here to Holland. They put them in, in camps where the Jewish people were. Concentration camps. So the way of treating them was very, I would say, unhuman. Uh, it's different. It was difficult because I was a little child. I don't know anything about our history, why we are here, why we live here in Holland. The moment that I discovered that I was different is the moment that I, I have to go to the Dutch school. At that moment I feel I, I am different because I went to the school where there were white children. They said to me, ah, you are black. And they didn't want to play with me, they didn't want to to sit with me, and I was very sad at that moment. And I want to go back again to the, the Amberney school here in the camp. And that's the moment that I asked my father why we were here.
As a little girl, I had dreams. I want to study. I want to be a teacher. My name wasn't Brenda. I was called Nona. Nona in our language means girl. So I came in to school and the school teachers always says Brenda to me. I get confused. They changed my name without asking me which name do you prefer to use when we call you. And from that time I was Brenda and I'm not liking it at all. But my mother thought when we give our children a European name, they won't look at them as special or different or, yeah. But they forgot we are dark. They forgot our skin. So that's little, little, little things reminds me every day we are different. You have to prove yourself who you are. We live now in 2020, but still, you have to prove who you are. The work that I do so as a welder, uh, you, you, when you come there first day, they see your name. Are you Molokan? They say yes. Okay, then you have to do that job. And when you do the job well, then they accept you. If you're not doing it well, then they will say, oh, it's typical, uh, typical uh, foreigner. When we're small, we grow up with, uh, with the idea that that's home. That's our homeland, Maluku. Uh, you have RMS, that's the government. The bank government is living in Holland. That's the free state of Maluku, the Republic Maluku Selato. So we raised with that. I used to carry flags and everything. 
So it was always, uh, I want to go back, I want to go back. My father always told me, um, you can shout as much as you want, but if you go back, you cannot live there. My idea was always, I can live there. That, that's my way of living. I like to live basic. I want them to know where they're coming from. I want them to remember the roots, to be proud of the name, because Parihala is not a Dutch family name. Parihala is a Malaccan family name with the roots, with the stories about the village where they came from. Parihala, they come from the village of Abubu. And Abubu is a village in Nusalaut. And Nusalaut is an island of the Moluccan. And the Moluccan is a part of Indonesia. And that's, that's I think, it's important to know. They also have children in the future. I have them to know about that. And to know the way that um, their grandparents were brought here to Holland. Oh, kijk eens, ze wil oma even laten zien aan jullie. Nou, zo staan. Kijk eens. Nou, dit is oma, oma Jo. Dit is oma Roosje. Dit is opa Ronnie. Nou, oma is de oudste. En dan komt opa Ronnie. En dan komt oma Roos. In de sneeuw. Toen sneeuwde het voor het eerst toen wij in Nederland waren. Het volkslied van de Jonge Republiek en wordt het rood-wit op het paleis gehesen. Voor alle Nederlanders een moment van weemoed, voor de Indonesiërs een ogenblik van vreugde en blijdschap.
I'm not criticizing my grandparents because I don't know in what for a real situation they were when they make a decision to became a knil militaire in struggle for the Dutch people. We are now 70 years later, so I cannot be angry at that. I think, why? Why do you want to struggle for the men who your colonizator. People say, yeah, you have, you, you criticize them. You call them a betrayer. No, I don't call them a betrayer. They were betrayed. They were finding a way to support their family. There were two things. Or you were against Indonesia for the Dutch, or the other side. You are against the Dutch and for Indonesia. So you had to choose. You had to choose to live. They choose to live, my grandfathers, both of them. What I've known about my father is that he uh, went to join the army when he was 17. And uh, with some friends of him, they, uh, they told their, uh, their parents that they go to school, what normally is, but they didn't want to go to school. They want to go to war. So he uh, lied to my uh, grandfather and didn't go to home from school. What he says, he goes to the, uh, to the agency and uh, right in the army. What I've heard was my father joined the army since he was 17 and never went home.
because my father is the eldest in the family. So his idea was to reach me more to fit in Holland. Yeah, that's why I don't learn the language. I said, you live here, so you have to live like people are living in Holland. Well, I was uh, tattooing for a long time, also the Moluccan tattooing, but something was missing, so uh, I don't know what. But I decided to slow it down a little bit because I, yeah, something was missing. And then three years ago, I met Sylvia. She's my girlfriend now. And when she came, things changed. Uh, she's helping me with traditional tattooing, also with normal tattooing. And she arranged, together with my family, to get a ticket to Maluku as a surprise for my birthday. And that's how I ended up in Maluku for the first time, alone also. So when I came back, uh, I live in a big, big house. And the first thing I wanted to do, I could not live in a big house anymore, so I wanted to live smaller. So I took a small apartment. But from that, it didn't feel good. I couldn't live in the city, and it's busy. So I went outside and lived more in nature, like I live now. I'm a little bit like my ancestors. We travel around. When our area is, is used, then we use the, the food, everything from that area. We, we move, we start a new area. Once in a year, I like to move to another place. een leuk liedje. Vind ik echt een leuk liedje. Die gaan we altijd zingen. Maar... Ja, hè? When me, my father arrived with the boat um, at Amsterdam, he was fired a soldier from the Knil. And from that moment on, he was a stranger. He didn't have any identity. He was not an Indonesian, he was not a Moluccan, or he was not a Dutchman. He had no identity. But my father don't want to sit down for that moment to be sad, to be every day sad because it was an educated man, because in the army he was a translator. Maybe, I don't think so that he was fighting. I don't think so, because he didn't speak about fighting. 
a lot of the Knell milita military or Knell soldiers, they don't tell about their fighting. But it is very sad for him too, to hear that he um, cannot go back to Indonesia. They choose to live because they had an agreement and you help us, we help you to make your country independent. And that's a, a big uh, promises, very big. They just bought uh, a few clothes because they know we came back. But other uh, families they left the children. They came here with only two, the youngest children. The rest, the oldest children are there. They felt it's not for always. It's just for a period of time we come back. That's the frustration was born for us, the promises they never kept. Because my grandfather died, killed perhaps for the government. I always see my grandfather looking at the window with his hands so on his back. Only looking, looking, looking. Never, never he said a word. When I ask him, Grandfather, where are you thinking about? Oh, no, no, you're too young. Oh, no, no, you're too young. Sometimes he was angry. And then he said just one sentence. Don't believe them. That sentence, don't believe them, still, still is very important. That is the pain from my parents. He's one of the soldiers who was here in Holland. Their voice never been heard by the government. My father always tells, I'm always fighting for the three colors, red, white, and blue. We give everything what we had, we give for these three colors. And uh, now we're coming here in Holland, now we are not needed anymore. 
they never get recognition from the government in, in Holland. I said always to my children, they treat our the first generation you like Columbus treat the Indians. <laughs> you feel the the, the, the pain of uh, of your of your father, but you can do nothing. How it is for us to, to live in a white society when we know you have treated us not so good, my parents, my grandparents, oh, 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 oh. very bad. We are 70 years here. We're still struggling with life. Dutch people don't care about that. They think they're helping you. They give you a home, give. You have to fight for your home. Nothing is given here. You have to earn it. When I came to Moluccan Islands first time, I was flying in the air and I saw the, the lights in the morning. I started to cry in the airplane. I'd never been there before, but it was coming home. And the plane landed. I was there alone, so I didn't know where to go. I just went outside. There was a lot of uh, cab dri taxi drivers. And every morning when I wake up, I just saw, just like life is starting from there, from Seon. When It's starting to come light and all the clouds, everything comes from that island. Yeah, it's, it's magic, it's real magic. And it really feels like your mother. My father refused to go back to Indonesia. He said to us, no, ma papi, I don't want to go back because I will remember Indonesia when I was a boy of 18, 20 years because he was afraid to see another Indonesia. The dream for a free country, I think for my grandfather, was important. Um, that's why we are in Holland. 
I never heard my father too much about Hermes, about the free country. When I was small, I was very fanatic. I wear a flag, everything, Hermes, this and that. Yeah, for me the dream is over. Because we stay all together, we didn't grow. Or we are afraid to grow. Because we are not going to die here. We're going back. That is the dream we all had. It was a seed planted in our head and it's still there. When I was a child, I always hear, someday, someday, we're going back. So when you are going back, why do you have to study here? Why do we saving money here? We're going back. I think we still live with the frustrations from our grandparents and parents. The untold stories from them we carry with us. We haven't find a way to tell their stories in a good way. It's also because we're unseen. My father has passed away and I married with a Dutch girl. My son from 22, he asked me about RMS and uh, I said, yeah, this is one of the dreams that your grandfather had. That is what the, I don't forget what he said. Uh, he uh, wants to return to Indonesia only if this is RMS is realized as a country. Now we are living in uh, 2020 and uh, still it's not realized. This is a special medal. The Dutch government gave it in uh, 1968 as a remembrance for the Moluccan uh, soldiers. You see a bird, we call it a pombo, uh, one of the symbols from Moluku. And then at the back, you will see a Moluccan fighter. This one is from my grandfather. He refused uh, to uh, take uh, this medal because it felt like uh, betrayed to him to accept this while still living in Holland. For him it has no meaning because uh, I think, you know, at the time there was no going back anymore. But my father uh, went instead of him. Now my father has passed away and now I, I kept it as a remembrance. Attack our own. Fighting each other only makes us weak. The enemy is not in this camp. The enemy is out there. 
This is my place I like to be because I feel this is my home. It's enough for me. I have a roof above me. Um, I have everything here. I have the nature, um, good surroundings. My children don't live here anymore. but. It is my place to be here because I grew grow up here and um, I learned my husband here. I can be me here in this camp. When I go outside, I go with Dutch people, I have to be like them or they want me to be like them. Okay, outside. I'm like you, but inside, I'm me. I'm a Moluccan woman here in the Lunetten. Hello. 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 We are raised by militaries. My grandfather was a soldier, and soldiers are tough. No tears, only obey, don't show your weakness, always your head are high, and brave, be brave. That's all they ask about you, from you. We are Moluccan people. We are not used to tell bad stories about ourselves because we are, are ashamed. When we go outside, we want that others have an image of, from us that we are decent people, hardworking people, very nice, loving and caring about family. I didn't fit, not in the family, but also not in the community, because my mind was always asking questions and 
nobody can answer me the questions, but in my mind it's still, it's still running. So the first time I ran away from home because I had a, a huge fight with my parents. Sometimes you don't understand you have pain. You only feel angry. You only feel frustration. I had an idea to go to Alifu people to ask a little bit about uh, tattooing. It's the first place on earth, first people. Alifu means first people. Yeah, they took me out of my hotel, took me to the jungle, and I had spent almost a week in the jungle to, yeah, to learn things about nature, because everything from our tattoo culture comes from nature. So I had to see things in the jungle uh, where the Symbols came from. Yes, you have to be a Dutch man. My husband refused. He refused. He said, no, no, I don't want it because I am American. I said to him, okay, but it is better for us. It is easy to go out of the country if you, are, you have a Dutch um, passport, you are a, a Dutch man. But in your heart, you still be a Moluccan man. And you can see your, your skin, it's brown. And your name, your name tells you that you are not a Dutch man. You still are a Moluccan man with your children. So we decided to become the Dutch nationality. But inside, we are still Moluccan. I never seen Ambon. I hope I will see Ambon. But in my mind, I know everything about Ambon. Because you were brought up with it. When you go outside and you see another Molukka, the first thing you ask is, what's your name? What's your name from your father and what's your name from your mother? When I hear the name, I immediately know where he comes from and what is our relationship. Next year I'm 60, so 60 in these 60 years, you live your life and you see what happens around you. You see the first generation die and the second generation still here. When you're getting older, you think more about how it's going to be in the future. Where is our identity? I have uh, three grandchildren. They're still small. The, the oldest is nine years. You hope in your heart, you hope to tell the story about 
my father or my mother, how did they come here? At some moments in your life, you uh, want to share with your father. But it's not possible. Yeah, I miss him. I miss him. You see, in the third generation, a lot of people are going to find their own way. Uh, people are searching for the identity and to bring that back to how it was. To find your Moluccan culture, I think we have to go back first to our homeland. And then you can find what it means for you to be Moluccan, because in here in Holland it's different. This is Holland, it's a different. Uh, we keep some traditions here, but it's from 60 years. And our traditions are much older. We have to lose a little bit of our things we learned here and find our own traditions back. Good luck. My life is at this moment, yes, it's now, I don't want to say it's empty. My husband passed away, so I'm alone. My children are not living in the camp. My grandchildren, I have to pick her from the school. I bring her to swimming lessons. And I am working at the monument. I do everything my husband did. Yes, that's my uh, yes, my way of living. And sometimes I'm all alone. I do nothing. It's sometimes it's. Uh, I feel sad. I'm sad because I miss him. He was my rock.
was 15 or 16 when they uh, stopped the hijacking at the train for the second time. The, the Dutch government ca came and occupied our uh, community for two days. So I couldn't go to the bathroom alone in our house. There were two soldiers at the door with a big gun. And they were not afraid to use it, I know it. I can see it in their eyes. I saw police officers shouting, yelling, uh, commanding us to strip our clothes. They were searching in, in all the rooms at the, our house. They were digging in the garden to uh, look for uh, uh, weapons or knives or bombs. Now at that moment I didn't know anything. I was forced, like all the others, to look back, to read about ourselves, because our parents didn't talk, can't talk. They couldn't help us with our problems. They know I am frustrated, but they were frustrated also. I was angry. Angry at my parents, angry at the outside world, angry at the government, angry at everybody. Zeven dagen na de kaping door Zuid-Molukse jongeren stond tussen Bijlen en Hogeveen nog steeds die trein van de Nederlandse spoorwegen verloren in het land. Van het begin af aan heerste er grote activiteit van de zijde van Rijkspolitie, Marechaussee en Mariniers die het gebied rond dat stukje spoordijk van de buitenwereld af.
They didn't explain us, little ones in, in the community, why they were doing this. And the little ones like me were the first to get hit when they go outside the community. I know they love us. I know that. And I know they did it for us. But they didn't know the consequences at that time. So I was angry at them. I want to talk about my frustration because it felt not good. I had to be proud of them because they did something for us, for the Moluccan people, to get awareness in the, in the Netherlands for our grandfathers. But I didn't understand it at that time. I was 13. Oh, I get so frustrated in my mind. I want to find a way to ease my mind. That's the simple thing. Other people go drink, other people go gambling. I'm going to smoke, that's the easy way to do it. And at that time, smoking weed, smoking hashish was the easiest way to get peace in my head. When I feel lonely, I'm not lonely anymore when I was smoking. When I was sad, I can push the sadness, my pain away when I get stoned. I could laugh about a lot of things when I was stoned. So it was a way to not feel, not learn, not see. It was hiding. I leave my children. I leave my ex-husband and I went. So the last 20 years I didn't live with them. I care about them, but I didn't find the strength to pick up the phone and ask them how it is. During that time, during the hijacking, there was a lot of tension. At that time, I was working. At that moment, you feel some negative feeling from the people, the Dutch people. They think also I am a hijacker. A lot of them, they don't talk, but they, you see on the eyes that they hate you. Actually, you don't know what the Dutch people did in the past. The real history, what you read about it, and is they, they were just like pirates. They're murdering a whole community. They have killed only for spies. At that time, I think, okay, it's good that they're doing it because the first generation, they need attention from the Dutch government. The first generation, they were soldiers coming here and they were at, at the moment that they stepped their foot on Dutch ground, they weren't soldiers anymore. Later I think, no, it's not the way to do it because they are creating more hate.
and we heard about the hijacking of the train. I was already married. I had little children. At that moment, at that time, when I hear it for the first time, I said, oh, why? Why they do it, the boys? Why they do it? So we become a bad name, eh? the, the Dutch people, what they think about us. We are friendly people. We are not people who like to kill other people. So that was my first thought. And um, I was very sad. I was very sad when I heard at the moment, at the hour when I heard that the, that the boys were killed by so many bullets in the train. Because they don't deserve to, to be killed like that way. At this moment, I'm still very angry. I'm still very angry. Because we are different. But we are not killers. I know that. Addiction in the Molokan culture here in, in Molokan society here in Holland is a very big issue. Not from my generation, before me and before that. So my parents had to deal with it and their parents had to deal with it. I want to fight that and I know, I always know, it's not the addiction. It's a cover up. It's too much. It's too long, pain after pain after pain after pain, because I'm the third generation. It's not only my pain, it's the pain of my parents, the pain of my grandparents, and perhaps the pain of their parents and the Molukka. It's a little bit in our DNA. So we are used to deal with pain with not talking about it. It's, it's holding us back. After 70 years in Holland, it's holding us back.
but it's up to them. You know, I don't, uh, don't want to push them. Jay Minton? Yeah. My youngest is nine years old. He's the one who is asking about his uh, identity, the Moluccan culture. That's why I wanted to tell my story. Not only because it is my story, it's a story for all the nonas in the community. And we are strong women. We are very strong women. The women in the Moluccan society has always has an invisible role. But they are the backbone of the society. I'm still homesick. No, it's two years ago, but I still want to go back. It was really like coming home. I don't know why. I've never been there, but it was really emotional. So I feel so connected with that island. But when I was there, I would never leave again. Did the paradise focus? Yeah, yeah. Uh, also in the jungle, I have children, everything, I have a girlfriend, but I was thinking for myself, when I die there, it's no, no problem, because I'm home. 